do you have some routines you found to be so powerful that you kept them secret to yourself and never revealed mm -hmm. them? I have attempted to reveal as much as I can in the time I'm given with my students. You know, in other words, I, I hold nothing back, even magic secrets. I've taught magic to those who would appreciate its use in field. And anyone who watches me use it in field will soon desire to want to do magic specifically as their art form in field. I sort of uh, inspire people to go the way of magic because it works so well in field. But uh, what about getting good at storytelling? You know, storytelling is is good too. It's something you can get good at. Like Lunch at the W, you know that story? It's written about in the book, Hey Guys. It's by Love Drop. And maybe I won't run it right now, but it's a five minute long story that has DHVs in it that you're hanging out with women at a table having lunch at the W Hotel. And I go off into that story and it gives me something to run. It gives me a way of conveying my personality without hitting on them and demonstrating subtle high value. For instance, I'm hanging out with a group of girls. I'm not hanging out with a group of dudes, right? Uh, when I get to the bill being paid for by someone, it shows the good luck that I have. When I talk about looking around and seeing who paid for it, uh, it isn't this group over here. It's not that group. But there's a single guy behind me in leather chaps, leather vest, handlebar mustache, the works. And he's looking dead in my eye. And I think he just bought us lunch at the W Hotel. Oh, my God. I guess I should at least go up and thank him. You know, it's kind of weird that he's he's doing it. But OK, so as we get up to go, uh, you know, the girls are getting their coats on. I walk over to the guy and I said it all wrong. I said to him, you know, I appreciate what you did for us, but I'm not gay. I don't know why I said it that way. It was inappropriate. It was wrong. I know it was stupid. I was embarrassed by what I said afterwards. But he, he looks at me dead in the eye and he says, come here. And I get closer to him and he goes, come here. And I think if he tries to kiss me, I'm going to flip out, right? And he goes, come here. And he looks me dead in the eye and he says, dude, I have no fucking clue what you're talking about. I was so embarrassed. That's my lunch at the W story. Right? Well, well me talking more about it than, than running the gambit. But you need gambits to fill in the timeline. So learn lunch at the W. That'll fill your timeline. And it has a couple of DHB spikes in it. I'm hanging out with girls, not guys. You know, I'm, I'm having lunch at the W Hotel. I'm not, you know, uh, eating at McDonald's. So the story helps in the pickup, right? It's a it's chick crack, as as Love Drop would call it, chick crack, as Owen Cook from RSD would call it, chick crack. <laughs> what about you, boys? Any secret formulas you're hiding from us? I do have a secret formula, uh, but if we're talking a secret routine. There's one that comes to mind that I don't teach often, and uh, it hits very powerfully on women that are compatible with me, which is ultimately what we should be going for when developing routines is, you know, develop routines that are going to hit for you. So this is a routine where you're not going to necessarily bust it out in the club. You're going to be in comfort. You're going to be getting deeper with her. Uh, so I can get into a conversation about dreams and say, do you have any powerful dreams that you remember? I have one. I was in a room, an empty room, and there was a wall in front of me, an empty wall with a light projector behind me. And there was a shadow puppet show going on in front of me, right? Like shadow puppets. Only these were the most intricate shadow puppets I've ever seen in my life. It was like dozens of hands. There were dozens of hands all intertwining and moving together, putting on this elaborate shadow show in front of me. And I was mesmerized by it. 
all of a sudden the movements started to become very predictable. Like I could almost predict what the next pattern was going to be. And then I woke up in my dream. It was a lucid dream. I realized I'm not actually sitting in a room on a chair. This is all my dream. I am this wall in front of me. I am this light projector behind me. I'm even the space in between the wall. And all of a sudden I became sus suspended in space. My body disappeared. Everything was gone. I was suspended in nothingness. And I woke up from the dream suddenly, like jolted awake and I sat up and I realized that my dream was a metaphor for life, that we're actually all one energy taking on an illusion of separate forms. So while I'm talking to you right now and you're talking to me, really, you're talking to you and I'm talking to me. End of routine. That reminds me of a gambit. I love it. I love it. It's good for C2, C1, C2, when you're in isolation and they're learning about how you think. Right. I, I'm just uh, so impressed I, that me and me and mystery just did this at the same time. Uh, uh, and you, when you want to get that on camera, unfortunately, because it has, uh, uh, but I just had to mention that. Fair. Well, fair. thank you. Thank the you. One, it's, uh, that's that, a true story, by the way. That's not a made up routine. I had that dream. I yeah. jolted awake and there's more to the story, but that's the, that's the condensed routine, but that's a true story. That happened to me. It reminds me uh, of a of a gambit that I use, and I don't teach it a lot because it's for hired guns. And usually we reserve hired gun game for the third day, sometimes, depending on how uh, proficient the students are. You know, they may not be ready for exotic dancer game, you know, but if they are ready for it. This is a gambit that I've used on bartenders, for instance, that I think is really handy. I've memorized it. It's a gambit. It goes like this. You know what sucks? The very thing that's allowed you and I to meet just now is the very thing that'll keep us from ever getting to know each other. You know what that is? Well, you're at work. If it weren't for work, you wouldn't be here. If it weren't for my friends dragging me out, I wouldn't be here either. So we have to appreciate that we had a chance to meet because of them, because of work. But again, it's the same thing that'll ever keep us from get, getting to know each other. Because you got to get back to work. And as you can see, I got to rejoin my friends. But we're pretty socially savvy. If we wanted, we could figure a way around it. Any ideas? That's all I have to do. Any ideas? And usually they write their number on, a, on the back of a receipt and hand it to me. And that's a bartender. You got to work quick there. But it's a good gambit to run. Damn, that's, no um, uh, pauses. So good. It's Love that one. Memorized. Powerful. I say it slowly. Yeah, and and it's a nice quick close. Damn, that's that's so good. I'm really impressed, and I'm not even a bartender. <laughs> I, I, I keep saying that because uh, two two months ago I was hosting uh, the dating coach panel, and I did an Asian special. And being the host, I'm not even Asian. So I was like, that's some good <laughs> advice. And I'm not even Asian. I just kept saying that. 